How to draw a duct using your auto steel tool. Practicat offers a tool that allows us to quickly take flat two-dimensional steel drawings that are given to us by an engineer or architect and convert them into 3D Practicat drawings with the proper elevations. To do this we must utilize our auto steel tool. In this tutorial we have two lines that are on the drawing and these are standard AutoCAD lines. What we're going to do first is convert these basic AutoCAD lines into intelligent PractiCAD lines. You will notice here that if we click on the line you can see that it's got all the standard properties of an AutoCAD line listed here. Under geometry we've got the start XYZ and all the following parameters. What we're going to do is convert these lines to PractiCAD layout lines. To do that we must go into the create from lines icon. This is located on your PractiCAD ribbon or express toolbars. I'm going to click on it once. When we do that PractiCAD is going to ask us in the command line to select objects. Select both objects and then hit enter. When we do that, you're going to know that we've converted the lines because PractiCAD will usually change the line's color because it moves it to a different layer. Now if you click on the line, you'll see that it's under the PractiCAD layout line segment and you can see that we've added geometry parameter airflow. We also have intelligent stretch nodes that have been added to this line too. Layout lines can be converted to duct, steel, or pipe. In this tutorial, we're converting them to steel. Once we've got the layout lines converted, now we need to change them into steel. To do this, we're going to go over to the Auto Steel button in our PractiCAD ribbon. We're going to click on it. Inside here, the first thing we must do is on the left-hand side, select the beam type we'd like to use. Everything will be listed here from all of your wide flange shapes to your H piles all the way down to bar joists, which can also be utilized for conversion. In this tutorial, we're going to open up wide flange shapes and we're going to pick a W36 by 194. Now we have to choose all the rest of the parameters on the right. The first choice should always be set to top. Normal top means that if we're in plan view, the top of the beam should be looking directly at us. If we were to switch this to front view, it means the top of the beam would be looking directly at us if we were looking at the drawing from front view. And the same with bottom left and right. 99% of the time, we always leave normal set as top. And the way this auto steel button works is whatever settings you have here, the second time you open it, the settings will be saved. So this is usually set to top and it's very rare that I would ever change it. Next we have rotation angle. In other tutorials we show you how to rotate steel. We can have these beams come out converted and rotated if you'd like. Most of the time the rotation angle I have selected is at zero. Now we've got the whole parameters. We can take this line and use it to keep the steel lined up with the top, center, or bottom. In this tutorial we're going to say that we want the bottom of this steel to be at 10 foot. So we're going to say hold the steel by the bottom. Now we have to choose our start point and end point elevation types. Notice that we have two choices, absolute and by layout for start elevation. And we have the exact same choices for end elevation because we can convert layout lines to sloped steel. Absolute means that whatever value we put in here, that PractiCAD is going to put that beam at that absolute elevation. In other tutorials, we explain the concept of relative marks and relative bottom. When we are using the auto steel tool, we must always put the absolute elevation of the beam from zero, not from relative. The way it works is from zero. If we choose absolute, we can now give it a start point elevation value. For example, here we're going to say 120 inches or 10 foot is going to be the start point of this particular beam. If we wanted to just convert it to the elevation of the actual layout line, we could select by layout and then offset it from a layout line or just convert it where the layout line is. Most of the time we're doing it from the absolute elevation. 
So we're going to say start point elevation 120. We're going to set the end point elevation also to absolute 120. This means that the beam will be at 10 foot bottom and it'll be flat when we convert it from the lines we've already changed. The last option is to remove layouts. If this button is checked, PractiCAD will delete the layout lines after it converts the steel. If it's unchecked, it will leave them. And in the tutorial, we'll go over both scenarios. So what we've got here is to hold the steel by the bottom. Start point is going to be the absolute 10 foot in the air. End point is going to be absolute 10 foot in the air. And we're now going to press OK. At this point, it says to please select entities. And we can select as many entities as we want. And Practical will convert them all at the same time. We're going to start by just clicking on this one line and then hitting enter. When we do that, Practicat has converted that line into a W36 by 194. The bottom is at 10 foot. To do this again to represent a slope, we're going to go back into Auto Steel. Notice that the settings are exactly where we left them. It always picks up the last settings used. We're now going to say endpoint elevation is going to be 240, so 20 foot. And we're going to say remove layouts, which will remove the layout line when we're done. We're now going to press OK. We're going to click on this line and hit Enter. When we do that, you can see that Practicat has placed a W36 by 194. And here we have the bottom at 10 foot on one end and the bottom at 20 foot on another end. That is how to utilize your auto steel button.